This is Simona here, and I'm your Microsoft Office trainer. And in case you hadn't realised, this course is all about Skype for business. And what I especially love about Skype is that it provides us with a variety of ways for communicating in real time. Because I think that these days, often our default method of communication is email, which is absolutely not necessarily real-time communication. I mean, it might arrive pretty much instantly in the recipient's inbox, but <clears throat> it's quite unlikely that they will answer it immediately. So with Skype for Business, we can see whether a co-worker is online right now with what Microsoft refers to as presence, which always makes me laugh a little bit because for me, this term of presence seems to conjure up the idea of calling the spirit world, you know, is there anybody out there? But what it actually means is that we get to see whether the co-worker that we want to communicate with is online and available, shown by these coloured blobs. And when we know that a colleague is indeed online and available, then Skype for Business offers three types of real-time communication. So that's instant messaging, voice and video calling, and online meetings. But not only that, we can co-author on documents, we can share our screens, we can present PowerPoint slides, and even for formal meetings, we can run a poll and manage questions and answers from the audience. Wow. However, before you get too excited, do be aware that depending on exactly what licenses your organisation has bought from Microsoft, and there are loads of different options, your account might not be enabled for all of the functionality available. And also, don't forget, if your organisation is a Microsoft Office 365 customer, Office 365 is continually being updated. It's, it's kind of like a living thing. So please don't worry if the odd menu option or the odd feature here and there doesn't look exactly the same on my screen as it does on yours. I don't think it's going to affect your ability to follow this course. Now, talking about following this course, you're going to have a lot more fun with it if you treat it as a hands-on course and try out the functionality with me as we go. But with a collaboration tool like Skype for Business, it's kind of tricky to do collaboration on your own. So I've got some suggestions for you. Firstly, if you work in an IT department or in the training department, you may well have a couple of training logins for Skype for Business available to you. So maybe you could be logged in with those two different logins on different machines and send messages between the two accounts. If not, then maybe you've got a co-worker who won't mind you sending them little practice messages but I think the very best option would be if you followed this course with a colleague. For example, sit side by side, both of you logged in to your own account for Skype for Business and follow the nuggets on another screen. So that's going to really allow you to start a call or send an IM to each other and then look over your colleague's shoulder to actually see the impact of what you've just done on their screen. So I really like that idea. And don't forget, as usual, use the video player controls to pause me while you try something out or to slow me down or speed me up as required. And finally, I just need to mention that this course is specifically for Skype for Business, not the consumer product simply known as Skype. So without further ado, check that's what you've got and let's get learning. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.